Hey, hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherist.com, the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of catastrophe. It's uh, midnight here in the east, 9 p.m. West Coast time. I've had to redo this video because it's not uploading correctly. So we'll take it from the top and go through things one more time before uh, we finally give up for the night. Hopefully this will work. A lot to talk about here on this Halloween evening. Hopefully Halloween was okay. And uh, let's get right to the subject matter and see what we have to talk about or cover on our topics. We'll talk about the potential for another significant rain event for the Midwest and the East Coast, November 5, 6, and 7. The snow cover over Eurasia and the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the potential for a mild November for the U.S., but Canada looks pretty cold. And some shifts in the climate models. And then also the potential, also we'll talk about for the potential for a big East Coast low November 15th, which I don't think is going to happen. But the overall pattern looks pretty benign going into much of November. Now, as we go into November, I don't want people to start freaking out here, uh, you know, because they think it's a mild November. Let me point out a couple of things. If you remember the World Series back in 2008 between the Phillies and Tampa, they had that uh, Game 5 that was delayed. Then they continued the next day, uh, two days later, and they came, came back. They had snow in the game, and everyone thought that was going to be a prelude to a big winter. And that winter, winter turned out, 2008, 2009, to be very mild and snowless. Then you had the, the October snowstorm two years ago in 2011, and everyone thought in the Northeast, wow, if it's doing that at the end of October, what's it doing going to be like for the winter? And that turned out to be a extremely warm, a record-setting warm and snowless winter. So... Don't read too much into November. That's my point here. All right, let's get started. This here is the radar from 3 o'clock and 8.30 this evening. You can see the uh, the uh, front moving through the area. There were some showers which gone to D.C., uh, but there's also a lot of band of rain coming up from the uh, deep south here, so that has to be watched for Virginia and North Carolina later on. Uh, late Friday, uh, well, actually early Friday morning. And then um, let's take a look at the actual upper atmospheric pattern here. Let me get my marker out so we can see it. When I do a draw something like this, this refers to a ridge. You see the squiggly lines? That means ridge. Okay? So I just want to point that out to you. And this here is your trough. Now, if we notice, the ridge is here off the east coast, and that supports until it connects the ridge being the trough being the middle part of the country. So that's what that's why that's important here. This is not on the west coast. It's actually in the eastern, uh, eastern Pacific. So, Also notice we have a very strong positive uh, Arctic Oscillation, the AO, and the NEO is very positive and very strong as well. So that's what the actual October 31st 500 millibar map looks like. Okay, good. Next one. Now let's do the European. This is uh, the day five European from uh, the October 31 run. And we can see the uh, the uh, trough here uh, over the west coast again, the Great Basin. You can see it very strongly there. And look at the flow. See the flow goes like this. And here's our high. And of course you're getting a southerly flow this way, feeding the moisture up. And you can see the warm air coming southward. This is a big front here, and it's going to be a slow-moving front because of this huge ridge. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it, let me point it out to you. There's actually a little bit of a dome here. Can you believe that? Yeah, dome. So this is a slow-moving front, and it could be a pretty big, big rainmaker for the Mississippi Valley. And then if we uh, see the GFS, the same sort of thing. There's, okay, it has a dome. It's got the dome here instead. It's got it... Uh, Actually, it has it right here, as you can see, but it's the same idea. Huge trough. Again, you can see the, the warm air coming. There's a big high. See the big high there? Slow-moving front. Same sort of idea. Very, very similar maps. Good model agreement here. And this is the uh, European at uh, day 10. Now, here we have another system. There's a deep, again, that trough remains in place over the west coast. Okay, we can see it right here. See that? Uh, let me call it up. You can see it, see it right here. Okay, that's our negative PNA, right? And there's our ridge. There's your trough. For every trough, there's a ridge, and for every ridge, there's a trough. Remember that. Equal and opposite reactions. And sure enough, here's our ridge. So, and sure enough, look, we've got another little high uh, sitting uh, where, right about here. Okay, and it's feeding the moisture up this way into the front. And look how warm it gets in the plain states coming up this way. So, by day 10, it gets pretty warm. And if you look at the GFS, it's the same sort of thing. No different. Really, it's no different at all. Look how warm the GFS is. My God, look at this stuff, folks. This is impressive here for early November. Woo-wee! That's plus 10850s into Chicago and Minneapolis. Good googly moogly. So, now notice there's a huge cold air mass developing up in here. And what the GFS does in the extended, and this is what I'm talking about, that storm, is, uh, well, this is the day nine. Let's compare these two first here. 
Uh, the day nine, uh, this here is the European on this side, as you can see it. Um, this is um, here. This is the ECM, the European, and this here is the GFS, right? Okay. Both both have the big ridge here. Both have the big trough there. See that? And again, you see this feature right here. See that ridge in the central portions of the Northern Pacific? This and this teleconnects or matches up this. Okay. This matches this. This matches this. This matches this. That's it's really that's it's the wavelength. That's your teleconnection. And of course, we can see in here the positive NAO, the positive Arctic oscillation. Same thing here. So, but that big ridge in the central North Pacific is a driving feature. That means why that's why the trough stays on the west coast. All right. So we've got to get that feature out of there. And so far, that feature is not going anywhere. So it's going to stay there for a good portion of November. Actually, that's what it looks like to me. Now we go beyond that. This is the GFS here. The 12Z, October 31, one of the GFS. And what it does is, which is unusual and not likely to be correct, there's the ridge goes up this way, this comes down, boom. Okay, with big strong front here, big cold high coming in this way, which drops in. You can see the cold air coming southward. See the cold air coming south? A lot of rain here. Look how warm it is in the east. You can see there's the high off the coast feeding the moisture in. But there's a big cold Arctic air mass which comes down. You know, according to the GFS, around November 12th, and then finally you have a big storm on the east coast here. This would be rain on the coast, snow for the mountains, as you can see, at least according to what the model is showing us. Uh, there, there's the rain snow line. So, uh, but again, you can see this huge cold air high coming down. Look, you have big high here, another one here. Big classic early autumn storm. The problem is that solution is crap. No other model supports it. None, and it's not likely to happen with a positive AO and a positive NAO. That's why those things are important. Now, this is the uh, 6 to 10 day uh, rainfall map from the GFS. You can see a lot of rain here in the Midwest. And this is the European from this morning. Again, a lot of rain in the Midwest with this next front, November uh, uh, 6, uh, I guess 5, 6, and 7, yeah. So that covers that time frame. Now, this here is, uh, let me make sure I didn't skip a map. I did. So this here is the uh, total snowfall for the Northern Hemisphere. This is as of uh, the end of October. Now, some people were talking how the snow was not particularly impressive. And uh, the argument is that we had a lot of early snow cover with, or late September, very, very early snow cover in Siberia. And that means that the rate of change, which is important in doing the snow cover, how fast it expands and how deep was less or somehow affected. Now, that argument is crap. Uh, the research doesn't show that. You know, whether you get some early season snow in late the first week of September, it doesn't mean that the, your snow growth in October is less. It just simply doesn't work. On top of that, if you look at the data, as you can clearly see, um, let me change my color here for one second. Uh, I guess we could go, yeah, this. You can clearly see, notice here, this is the black, there, there's, this is the black line here is showing above normal, all areas. There's a brief little period it touches normal here, mid-October, but now it's taken off again. So I, I, the snow cover to me looks like it's doing phenomenally well and still well above normal. And this is from, I posted this from the Facebook page the other day. This shows you the, from October 30th, the huge change in snow amounts. Huge storm which is coming here over uh, this, this trough here. Uh, goes boom here October th November 6th, bombs out over Siberia, drops an incredible amount of snow on the GFS. The European has the same thing, and there's another system coming in behind that one. On, I guess that would be November 8th. So I'm still, uh, it still looks good to me. I mean, I don't know what folks are talking about. It still looks good to me. So, um, and this is uh, the uh, the European ensembles for day six. Look at that huge ridge on the east over the southeast. My goodness. That is impressive. That is an impressive ridge here. There's no toys about that. Look at this baby. And then here's our trough. Again, look, positive AO, positive NAO. So, and then the uh, GFS has the same sort of thing. So very strong agreement here, but this next front is going to be slow moving in front, a big rainmaker potentially for the Midwest and the Mississippi Valley, November 6th. And then day 10, the European, uh, and we can see the same sort of thing here. Now what's important to note here is that, um, let me call this up so we can see it. See the uh, trough here? Now that ejects energy this way over the ridge, and that produces more rain in the 6 to 10 to 11 to 15 day. Meanwhile, you've got this flow here like this. Now this is a very impressive cold air. This is a huge buildup of cold air in the Arctic regions. So this, so it's, but the question is when and if is it going to come southward. So, But that's why it's still a wet pattern for the United States and warm, but for Canada it's not. And this is the... Uh, Excuse me, I, I went backwards here. This is the GFS here at uh, day, same sort of thing. 
very, very, very similar type of, type of pattern. If we look at teleconnections, we can clearly see um, the Arctic Oscillation stays positive all the way through. The NAO stays positive most of the way through, very strongly positive there. And then the uh, on the on the Pacific side, EPO is neutral, drops down a little bit, as you can see right here. Notice that it's a neutral here, and then it drops down a little bit. And the PNA, which is negative, begins to come back a little bit. So maybe there might be some ridging developing after November 15th, maybe. That's just a possibility, nothing to be certain of yet. And if we look at down the road, uh, the ensembles here, as you can see, uh, very none of the ensembles, this was the big storm here. As you can see, it only pointed out here. This was the big storm right here. And notice that none of these maps, none of them, none, no, 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 no. And the mean pattern shows a trough here, a ridge out in the, in the Pacific. And then Pacific Canada flow looks still pretty cold, but the United States looks pretty mild. So there's no indication of support at all for that storm for November 16th. So uh, this is 300 hours out. Not much has changed. Looks November 13th. This is the uh, GFS ensemble. Uh, and uh, this is... Uh, and this is, uh, I guess this would be even further at GFS Ensemble for 384 hours out. And we can see the trough is still on the west coast. And uh, Canada is still getting very cold. A monster huge Arctic oscillation, which is positive. The NAO is positive. A lot, a lot of cold air building up there, but not yet coming down. And if we look at the European at 11 to 15 day, there's a, this was really important. Let me point this out to you folks. All right, this here is our, let me change colors so we can do this the right way here. This here. This see this feature here, that is the Aleutian Ridge. Okay, that is a uh, that is the uh, e or EPOs over here as you can see. And what it does is when you have the ridge in the northern Pacific, that produces the trough here. See it? And if that produces the trough there, your ridge has to be there. But a boom, but a bing, but a bomb. There you go. That's it. So that feature in the North Pacific's got to go. It's not going. The pattern's not changing. Arctic Oscillation strongly positive. NEO is very positive. That's 11 to 15 day, which takes us out to mid-November. And then beyond it, this is the wet pattern. Again, why is this so wet? This is the 11 to 15 day GFS rainfall, and it's pretty pretty common. You have obvious big trough here, big ridge here, so the stuff has to go this way. There's your rain. That's pretty pretty simple, really. And if you look at the week three and the week four, the, the CFS, what's it showing? Again, this is now, I have two of the runs, but the, this is, uh, if you look at the date here, call it up so you can see it. If you look at the date here, this is... Uh, October 29th, this is October 30th. Both of them show in week three a huge buildup of cold air in Canada. But look at the cold air not coming south. It's warm out here. A little cold air, a little spill over the northern upper plains. And then week four, a lot of cold air up in here, a lot of cold air up in here. Okay, actually pretty mild uh, in portions of the eastern United States. So both runs are showing that. A lot of cold air buildup in central and northern Canada, not coming south. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. You want it building up later on for the heart of the winter. And if we look further down the road, this is the CFS. Uh, this is November 15th through the 20th. Again, notice here, we can see very clearly. Okay, there's our um, there's our North Pacific Ridge right here. See it? And that produces the trough here. There's your Southeast Ridge. There's your flow. Okay, well, that doesn't look like it's changed much, has it? And then this is uh, November uh, 20th to 25th. Same sort of pattern doesn't change much. If we look at the, at the MJO, now the MJO, is look at this, takes it in, this is the European models, the weeklies here, takes it all the way out here, let me do this so you can see it, there's phase one, phase two, phase three, this takes us out by November 29th, and this takes us November 14th, okay, so one, two, and three, what, what, is that correct, is any other, is any other models are showing that, yeah, this is the MJO, uh, CFS from the folks at Albany, from uh, Kyle McRitchie, and he takes it out to phase three and four by the end of the month. So that looks pretty consistent. And if we look at what that looks like, well, phase one, very wet in the Midwest and eastern United States. And you can see that. If we look at temperatures, cold here, warm here. So this would support the cold air in the western United States and in central Canada, which is what we're seeing. That makes sense. I mean, phase two and phase three, if it goes to phase three, wow, look how warm it gets in the Midwest. So that's that would be impressive. By the end of the month, that could actually happen. So <clears throat> don't be surprised if that, in fact, happens. Anyway, that's the uh, video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you did. I'm meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.